I'm about to do something I've never done in my life before and something that no poker strategy book is ever going to suggest. I'm going to fold the second nuts pre-flop. And if I get shown queens, I might just have to retire. Now then, it is confession time. It is Friday today and since last Friday, a week ago, I've played poker once. So today, I plan on punishing myself. One of the most regular questions I get when I tell people I play poker for a living is what is the longest session you've ever played? And my answer is like 11 or 12 hours. I'm not one for these marathon monster sessions, but I have heard of people saying they've played 30 or 40 hours in Vegas one time or something like that. I'm not really capable of that. I don't think it's in the locker and I wouldn't be playing anywhere near a winning strategy after that long, I can tell you that now. So today the goal is to break that record of 11 hours. I'm here at 12 when the casino has just opened and I plan on staying until it closes, which is 6 a.m. That might be too much of a stretch, that would be 18 hours. But I'm gonna go for at least breaking the record and we'll see how that goes. All right, so we're getting into the game. It is 1-1 as we start here, and I've bought in for 300, which is the max. The first time we're going to cover, the hijack is open to 6. I've put in a 3-bet with Ace-9 of diamonds, because why not, you know? He calls, and we're seeing a flop. Heads up. It is a pretty good one for the random 3-bet here. Flopping trips in a very disguised fashion. He checks to me, and I continue for 15. He calls, and we are moving to a turn. Just in case I had any doubt that I was in the lead right now, the turn is the Ace of Clubs, making me 100% sure I have the best hand. He checks to me again, and I think for a while about what I want my strategy to be here and decide that I'm going to bet one third and also do this with hands like tens, jacks, queens, kings. And I'm not going to have too many bluffs here other than hands like backdoor clubs, so I don't need to go a big size. He calls, and we are seeing a river. The six of diamonds changes nothing, so my thoughts are purely on how do I get the most value here. The pot is 122, and as you can see, his stack has about 200 left in it here. The problem I see is that I just don't think he has a very strong range here. With me having one of the nines, it leaves his range looking a lot like pocket eights, pocket sevens. To be fair, maybe pocket sixes, pocket tens, that kind of thing. And with him having like almost a two to one stack to pot ratio left in his effective stack here, I think shoving is really ambitious and it really constricts the hands he can look me up with. So I go for a smaller middling size of 75, and all of that worrying about what I can get called with seems to be wasted energy when he instantly goes all in and I'm surprised to see that I actually did need the ace on the turn. He flopped a full house with pocket fives and I actually got very very lucky here. Early run good in the session, hopefully a sign of things to come. This next hand there is a straddle so it is 1-1-2. One, one, I open king 10 of spades to 8, there is a call on the button and the big blind makes it 40. Now I actually think king 10 of spades is a pretty bad hand to be calling a 3-bet with here, especially when the player on the button can call as well and then I'm not even in absolute position. However, he is holding his cards in his hand, looking like he's ready to fold. That means I'm going to have position if that is the case. And I've been getting called a nit a lot recently. And that's not the kind of street cred I want. So I'm going to throw in the call with a probably dominated hand. And we are seeing a flop heads up. The button does fold. The flop is a good one for me. I flop top pair with backdoor spades. I'm obviously now beating hands like ace king and king queen as well. The big blind continues for 40 and I call. The turn is the five of diamonds, which I don't think I love actually. And he slows down now and checks. I think his range at this point will still contain some overpairs that don't need protection like aces and kings. It will also have hands like ace-king, ace-queen in there as well. And with only one card to come, I don't really need much protection against those hands. So I think the best course of action is checking back and evaluating what happens on the river here. Sadly, me from yesterday when this was recorded didn't think so, and he bets 100. The opponent now moves all in for about 350 effective, so I hit my life quite a lot. This is mostly going to be overpairs, I'm definitely aware of that, and I'm not doing very well against those at all. Aces in particular, I literally am only drawing to a 10, same for kings. So a lot of the range that does this, I'm just crushed against, but I am getting a really good price. And if there's ever ace king and ace queen or something like that as bluffs mixed in here, it does become profitable quite quickly. Still, I think it's not going to be enough of a factor. And I think it's just going to be a fold in this situation here. But again, yesterday me disagrees and flicks in the call for the extra 250. We run it twice and lose both to pocket jacks. At this point, I move table to a new game that is opening. It's going to be a different lineup and is going to be a 1 2 5 game. Under the gun opens to 15. I'm not going to have any flats here, and I think 9s is good enough to V pip, so I'm going to put in a 3 bet. I make it 35, everyone else folds, and under the gun calls. The flop doesn't look bad for my hand, but when he checks to me, I actually decide to check behind. I have the 9 of diamonds and also some backdoor straight equity. I would hate to get check raised here and have to give up that equity. The turn is the jack of clubs, and that makes the board look very connected now. And the board looks like something that should be absolutely all over his range, where he's going to raise under the gun and call a 3-bet. He can have 8s, he can have 10s, he can have jacks for sure. And the hands that wouldn't be loving this board are the ones that should probably be 4-betting, so queens, kings, aces, ace-king, ace-queen. When he checks to me again, he seems quite weak at this point, and I'm not really sure how to range him. 
The river is the queen of clubs, so my backdoor straight gets there and also a backdoor flush draw came in. Finally, the opponent now decides to lead. He bets 35 and my decision here is obviously between calling and raising. And while I do think it's a little bit thin to go for a value raise here, I think there's probably enough hands that he can call with that are worse. Mostly that'll be weirdly played sets and rivered two pairs. I raise to 125. The opponent now starts thinking out loud, saying, oh, I think I let you get there, etc and eventually folds, saying that he had pocket aces. Very strangely played if so, but this is an opponent who does have some wacky lines in him, and we are going to play another hand against him later in the session that highlights that. This next one is going to be one of the defining hands of the session. I open to 20 from the low jack with queen jack of spades, the big blind and straddle both call, and we're seeing a flop three ways. The flop is king 10 five rainbow, which means that what we have here is the most natural and obvious bluff in my entire range. So when check two, obviously I'm going to continue here. I continue for 35 and both of them call. The turn is a dreamy one, ace of clubs. I now have the nuts. It checks to me again, and this gives me the opportunity to take part in one of my favorite hobbies, putting money in the pot when I know for sure that I have the best hand. I decide on a size of 100 and what I'm looking to charge here is mostly turned two pairs. So ace five and ace 10 mostly. Also, there may be some hands like 10x of clubs that picks up a flush draw here. That kind of thing is probably going to call as well. The big blind does call and the straddle folds. So heads up to a river. I'm hoping for a clean one, meaning that I'll still have the nuts on the river. And that's unfortunately not what we get. It is the four of clubs bringing in the backdoor flush draw. Having said that, I don't think there's going to be too many flushes in his range. As I said, when I was thinking about what hands I can get value from on the turn, I think the only flush draws he can have are ones with a 10 in it so that would be probably 10 9 10 jack and queen 10 of clubs so three combos not too bad on top of that i think a lot of people in this situation if they did backdoor a flush would now lead and he doesn't he checks to me so overall i'm not too concerned about the backdoor flush i think what we have here is still a very clear value bet and it's just going to be a case of deciding on the best size the stack to pot ratio is pretty awkward i have about 400 or 450 left in my stack so just over the size of the pot therefore if i go any size smaller than all in i think i'm going to be pot committed anyway with such a strong holding so i decided to just go for max value here and shove we get snapped and unfortunately it is bad news on this occasion he has the jack 10 of clubs for one of the few combinations of a backdoor flush that i think he can actually have here in hindsight i don't love the shove and i think maybe betting a smaller size and folding to a jam might be a better play here since it would be very hard for him to have bluffs let me know what you think in the comments I reload and I'm ready to get back among the action when I look down at pocket nines in early position. I open to 20 and as you can see here, there's a little bit of a call train going on. I think we end up getting three calls before the straddle raises it to 85. He's one of the shorter stacks at the table and he has maybe 350 left behind. Everyone else in the hand shouldn't be too strong. And what I'm seeing is a load of dead money and weak ranges and an aggressive player three betting in the straddle trying to scoop some of this dead money potentially. I think nines is doing pretty well against his three bet squeeze range and especially with the overlay that I'm going to be given with these calls in between. I think it's good enough to run it here. I decide to shove. The other players all fold and the straddle calls. He quickly rolls over pocket queens. That is going to be bad news, especially when he hits a queen. We do have a gut shot though, looking for a 10. No bueno. Luckily, we are running it twice, so I have another chance to get a chop here. Flop is no help. No draws on the turn. We need a nine. nine, 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 nine. Oh! Never in doubt. Jump it up, jump it up, jump it up. I told you you were <laughs> Mid-session interval. It is now 5 p.m. Uh, I have not been playing very well so far, and I'm down about 800. Things may deteriorate even more from here. Alcohol will be arriving in the next five minutes, so apologies for anything coming from now on. So I'm now sitting on a stack of about 800 and that warning is going to come into effect immediately here. I'm raising ace eight of clubs under the gun. Questionable whether this should be in the under the gun range playing eight handed or nine handed, but I've had one sip of rum and coke. So what do we expect at this point? The first two players to act call and then there is another player that puts in a squeeze to 85. It folds back to me and I decide I could fold here, but a wise vlogger once told me that folding is boring. I decide instead I'm going to put in a four bet to 200. I think with my tight table image, this is going to get a lot of respect. Just kidding, I get absolutely snapped. Sam. The player who put in a three bet is also going to call, so we're going to have your standard four bet three way pot. I'm out of position and I have ace eight. Going very well so far. All things considered, the flop is actually quite a helpful one for me though. I flop a gut shot and backdoor clubs, and on top of that, this board is very, very unlikely to have connected with either of these opponents, meaning that I still retain my pre-flop range advantage. I only have about 600 left in my stack, so a one stack to pot ratio. This flop was about as good as I could have hoped for other than actually drilling my hand with a flush or two pair or something. I'm going to send it in there and hope for the best. The first opponent thinks for what feels like an absolute eternity before eventually folding. The other player folds too and I take it down. I make sure to show the eight of clubs though just so that any future bluffs I want to make have zero credibility. 
At this point, I would like to draw attention to the absolute mammoth stack that has been quietly growing on my right there. I love to play some deep stacked poker, so I go and add on an extra 1500. Game on. Not long after this top up, one of the most ridiculous hands I've ever covered on the vlog is about to take place. I open to 15 under the gun with 9-7 of spades. Obviously, Friday drinking ranges are in play. We get a middle position call and the straddle comes along as well. The straddle being the mammoth stack I mentioned previously. He's having an amazing session. He's running ridiculous. He's making some crazy wacky plays and everything is just going his way so far. That is the context needed before this one. The flop leaves me feeling like I'm probably done with this hand. Ace 5-3. There is one spade for a backdoor glimmer of hope. The action checks through and we're seeing a turn. It is the king of spades, which means I do actually pick up a backdoor flush draw. The straddle now decides to lead for almost full pot. He bets 45, which unfortunately prices me out of calling with my flush draw. Luckily, there is one other option. I decide to turn my flush draw equity into a bluff and raise to 150. The value hands I'm representing here are all very, very nutted. It's going to be kings, which I think I can very credibly represent with the line I've taken. Aces that was worried about not getting value from anything else on the flop. And potentially a hand like ace king that mixed in a check on the flop for deception. The other player gets out of the way, but the straddler's having none of it. He comes along with a call. The river is a total brick, the eight of hearts. He checks to me again, and I decide I am going to follow through with this bluff since his range is looking very weak and condensed. And my range is totally uncapped. I can still have the nuts here. So obviously what I'm hoping to achieve with this bet is to obviously fold out the other missed draws they're going to fold for any price but i also want to fold out some weak ace x holdings people get very sticky on ace high boards when things don't change much so i'm going to use a big size i bet 300 the straddle calls and not only could i not get him off a weak ace i couldn't get him off pocket sixes what okay i'm pleased to bring a vlog exclusive this is sergeant punt who has been in recent vlogs uh since uh -huh. since gone broke so he can't actually play with us anymore they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't get into it because they would never but uh he's actually gonna play a hand for me right now and i will try and explain his thought process with my commentary here we okay. go so shockingly the casino took issue with another player playing with my three thousand pound stack so that wasn't allowed so instead he's going to be whispering in my ear what he would like to do and i can take that advice or not take that advice and i'm just gonna take it so we open under the gun with ace queen off to 20. the small blind makes it 65 and team sam punt decides to call the flop is pretty dry 727 with backdoor clubs for me the small blind continues for 35 and for that price i am going nowhere the turn is the king of clubs and the small blind slows down and checks now i think in our spot we can go either way and we can either check or bet but we decide to check behind and the river is the three of clubs he checks again and it's time to go for some value we decide on size of 125 and get absolutely snapped by 10 8 of clubs this is now the title hand of the video and i'm sure you clicked on it curious as to how the hell this has taken place but here we go big stack of mcgee on my right has opened under the gun to 15 I've put in a 3-bet with kings to 50, and the guy on my left has cold called. It folds back around to the under-the-gun razor. And before we discuss what's about to take place, some further context is needed with Big Stack McGee here. Before the session started, he was complaining about the downswing he's been on recently and saying his bankroll was depleted and he could do with a big win. Since then, he has ran unbelievable all session, really moaned it in. And now I was just starting to get the sense that this was a really big and important win for him and he didn't want to do anything to mess that up. On top of that, he has already got a rack on the table. He has announced that this is his last hand. And then what he does is go ahead and choose this sizing. Those pinks are 100 chips, meaning he just made it 715 pounds over my 50 pound three bet. Instantly, I go from feeling great about having the second nuts and hoping that I'm gonna win a big pot here to really not feeling very good about it anymore. Now, in any normal situation, obviously that would be insane to start feeling like you didn't have the best hand with Kings pre-flop when someone put in a four bet, but the sizing and the timing of this when he's about to leave with a huge win, just not a great combo here. So I started to think about potentially the psychology behind this sizing and what he would be trying to achieve with it. And I've actually seen something like this in live poker before where someone has had aces and they just make some outrageous preflop sizing to try and dissuade anyone from entering the pot and just allowing them to win the hand there and now without having to run the equity, scared that they're going to lose with aces and lose a big pot. I started trying to work out if there was possibly any other hand that he would ever do this with other than aces. So I started by moving down one pip to kings. Obviously, there is only one combo of kings left, and I just honestly don't see it. It's also not the end of the world if I fold and I've lost 50 pounds and he has kings, but it would be pretty sad if I got stacked for 1,500 big blinds here. 
I moved one pip further down to Queens, and honestly, I'm not even 100% sure that he would 4-bet Queens. I think in the amount of garaged up that he was, he might have just called. So, I'm sure you can see where this is going by now. I'm about to do something I've never done in my life before, and something that no poker strategy book is ever going to suggest. I'm going to fold the second nuts pre-flop. And if I get shown Queens, I might just have to retire. Luckily, it's not going to come to that. The opponent shows, and I was right. I'm the best! The best! Yes! The best! <laughs> yes! Right, so I've been drinking a while. I, we're going out, uh, but record broken. It is 11.20 or something now, so I've broken my previous record by 20 minutes. Progress. 1% better every day, that's what I like to say. So we're heading out now. Uh, I'll do the cash out. We'll see if I won or lost. I don't even know. But right now, the overwhelming feeling is that I saved 3k in that last hand. So I'm happy. We're going out.